you did you look up to? Yes, Andrew said it beautifully. You know, you look up to yourself. You know, you, you want to be, well, yeah. there's only one Serena Mudley, but who do you admire in horse racing? Or who's your role model? Or who look, was your role model? Look, uh, I always looked up to Anton. You know, his work ethic is phenomenal. I mean, he'll go and work always anyway. And I always looked up to him growing up, as well as Keegan. You know, I like Keegan's style, and I think he's he's developed really into a top class rider. You know, and uh, look, growing up in as an academy, I used to love following Keegan and, and Anton. So those were my two role models uh, going through the academy. Welcome to another edition of In The Box Seat with myself, Warren Inferno, and my very special friend and guest, Serena O. Oh, are you back? Sorry, I was so used to doing it, yeah, the introduction well. without you in it. You've been away I for so long. I must enjoyed it without you too, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I better start that again then. Welcome to another edition of In The Box Seat with myself, Warren Inferno, my good bushy-haired friend, Andrew Harrison, who's decided to grace us with his presence after four weeks' absenteeism. And our guest today is also a very special friend and a wonderful human in the form of Serena Mudley. Serena, how are you? Good, thanks, Fena. How are you? Lovely. Lovely to have you here uh, to talk nonsense with us and uh, learn all about you and uh, share your story with the public. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks to you guys for having me on the show. Now, <coughs> how was your holiday? Very good. But couldn't, good. I must say, you do look like you, you look like you've had a good holiday or... Uh, you're just very chilled, it seems. No, I'm chilled, eh? Yeah, okay. I had to scrape, nice. scrape the beard off. Yes, you've morning. moaned a bit about a few things. You've moaned about having to shave. You've moaned about having to pay 100 rand for a sachet of milk. Jeez. Tell Eric, us about that. You don't stick Eric in the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about uh, what, Eric, happened? Eric, what happened. Eric the barman and Manuelito, you had to go, go buy some milk. Uh, okay, uh, so he sorted you out. Yeah, for 100 rand for 10 little those little picky things. Okay. Yeah. And Andrew, tell me. Must have been good milk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it must have been good, good milk. What was the weather like? Good weather or mixed? Oh, mix hot. Hot, 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 hot. And sightings, beautiful. Beautiful. All the lot. Okay. And uh, just you and the wife? Yeah. So have you rekindled the love affair? No, there was, I saw the, got a thing from Craig Ramsey there, about an Indian bloke who called his wife Four Horses. Why do you call it four horses? It's nag, 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 nag. <laughs> <laughs> but it's lovely to have you back for all the trouble and cheek I give you. Yeah. And all the trouble and cheek you give me. We did miss you. And it's nice to have you back. No, cool. Thank Glad you, you had a good holiday. Good luck. to. I'm going on holiday soon, but uh, okay. you're going to be doing my work while I was doing yours. Yeah. Um, Serena, the normal question that I ask everybody, and it's an important question because it gets the discussion rolling. Rewind the clock to tell us about how how did this all start for you? How did you hear about horse racing? How did you know or want to become a jockey? Take us right back to where it all started. Look, Mr. Infana, it was quite a while back. You know, I think I was like 10 years old. And uh, my dad used to take us on random art rides at the one place at, at Walkerville. And uh, it started like that. And I think the bug bit. And, you know, my uncles were always about the Vodacom Dab in July. And... My dad was never interested in racing, so look, when my uncles heard that we were going on art rides, he said, geez, why don't you become a jockey? And I didn't know, have a clue what a jockey was, you yeah. know, so slowly, slowly they introduced me to it and took me to a race meeting one day and I just fell in love with the sports and uh, I decided, you know, let me try and go into the show jumping uh, side of things before I enter the, the racing side of things and look, I went to a show jumping school next to James Marie's farm. And it was funny because I'd never known it was Jane Marie's farm and uh, I went on like a uh, camp there and the lady's name was Felicia and I stayed there for like three days. I must have been like 10 years old so I was still a little bit nervous about things and about horses and uh, I crossed over to go to the shop and the shop was on Jane Marie's farm and I saw the horses working past in the morning. So anyway, after the three days, I told my dad, I want to go there. I don't want to be here. Yeah, you wanna, yeah. I want to go no, that good, time. Good, good. I said, that, that looks more exciting, and uh, so that's how I eventually started. Okay, now... So you're a Joburg boy, huh? Yes, yes I was, absolutely. I was born and grown up in Joburg, yes. 
But now, it, 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 interesting how the story takes a bit of a full circle because James Marie, that was where his school was, but then you came to the Jockey Academy and... But then you, you ended up getting your license working through the Work Riders program through James Marie, and what a man James Marie is. Yes, you know, I can't thank them enough, uh, James Marie and Martinez Mini. You know, they were really instrumental in getting me going. And uh, look, I think it definitely paid off. You know, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world to go through that way. You know, I think I've learned a lot that way. And uh, look, I think it, it paid off later on in my career. And uh, look, Mr. Marie done a lot for me and Mr. Mini as well, you know. So, it was just fantastic that, that I could get going and uh, obviously once I left the academy and went to the work rider schools, it taught me a lot about racing and uh, you know sometimes when you start as an appy, you make a lot of mistakes so it, it can set you back for quite a bit and when I came back after the work rider schools, I mean I managed to get going after like four or five months and, and I knew what I was doing you know so it was a massive help actually being a work rider you know yes. and uh, I think it's, it's a bit of an advantage when you do come back and you can claim four and you've had like yes. 25, 30 rides in the work riders race. Yeah, well, you, got, you got two of the best uh, coaches in, in, in the country, in James Marie and, and, and Martinez Mini. They're both top jobs. Is, exactly. is he still actively involved, Martinez Mini? I don't know. Yeah. Yes, from what I know, I think he is still, okay. yes. And, uh, but James Marie, I mean, he rode with, with Gerald Turner and, 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 and those blokes. I mean, they were, they were top. Yeah, they were, I mean, just they were probably the best of the being, best. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful human being, James Marie, too. I believe he was during this COVID time. Uh, Paul Peter was telling me that he uh, was quite ill, uh, James Marie, and he's recovered now and he's, he's doing well. He's well. not a lati anymore. No, he's not, yeah, not, yeah. not, 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 uh, not a lati anymore at all. Um, okay, and isn't it amazing how, Andrew, how... Yeah, but the Work Riders Program, you, I mean, a lot of Hudson Yes, I was going to say yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, a lot of, I think, myself, Diego, Lau, Calvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think... If, if I'm Tend to be correct, I think we've all, we've all in group one winners to yes. this date, so I mean, it speaks for itself. Absolutely, absolutely. But also, too, is, is how life's cards, you know, what cards you get dealt and, and what routes you have to take to get to where you want to get to. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think, in anything, in your career, in your sport, in your life, in your personal life, uh, whatever cards you get dealt with, you've got to be able to. What's that good old saying? If life gives you lemon, lemons, make lemonade, sort of thing. Yeah. Because you were determined that you were going to be a jockey. Yes, I promise you. If you had to ask me, you know, as a worker, I was going to be a jockey today, I would tell you no. And it was extremely difficult. You know, it was never easy. It was hard work. And uh, look, you have to be determined to 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 go through all of that. I mean, we also had a stint down in gym, and you know, courtesy of, of Omen Ferraris actually helped me because I, I rode work for him at the time. And as I said, Mr. Farras, I don't want to be a worker. Right? And he said, don't worry, I'll try and help you. And he actually wrote a hand letter to the Jockey Academy in Zimbabwe. And Martin that grumpy old man looked off you. Mr. Farras is hard, eh? but I, I must hard, be honest, I learned a, a lot of valuable things yeah. from Mr. Farras. You know, he's he hard to work for, but you, you learn a lot from him. And uh, I'm just grateful it helped me in, in my riding today. And uh, yeah, look, and he, <laughs> he wrote the letter. Martin Bull was actually at the academy at the time, and he in, received. In Zim. Yes, in okay. Zim. Okay. He was the riding master in Zimbabwe, okay. so he received the letter, and that's how myself and Diego, by Gary Waterson, and, and everyone got involved in, in going to the, the Zimbabwe Jockey Academy. So you flipped the right channel, eh? <laughs> no, well, that, that's why I say that's why how life sometimes you know yeah. you, you you want to go that route, and, and you know somebody yeah, else says no, 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 you're going no, that no, route. But Serena fell in with all the right blokes. So you got Marty Bull and. Norman Ferraris yeah. and, you know, so you, you, and, and it's good you know, because you don't want to fall yeah. in with the wrong oaks. You know, if you fall in with the wrong oaks, or you know, you're not going to get the right route. Well, so I fill in with you. That's <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of you for the last. I don't know how long, and you're not listening. Um, anyway, so Norman Ferraris at the ripe age of 90, still running around the stables at Turf and Tain to Top this way. day. He's, he's he's a soldier, absolute soldier. You've also got a uh, so, so so okay. So then then you 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 became a jockey and, and so so that's basically how it all started. And that was your your journey through. Yeah. Your brother is also uh, involved in racing. Tell us how. Yes, you know from a young age when I used to do show jumping, he actually did show jumping with me. He was in the I think the smaller classes and uh, he always wanted to follow in my footsteps and <laughs> he'd come and watch racing. And I was riding as a work rider and and sometimes you could come up to dad when he would come. And yeah, so he, he actually went to England for, for a year. He rides in England and uh, he's currently going back there. So yeah, he, he's firmly part of my career too. You know, he always asks for advice here and there. And uh, look, it's just fantastic to have a brother in racing. You know, it's, it's always nice, but I always warn him that it can be difficult at times and you got to keep your head up. 
What is yep. his name, Serena? Uh, Tristan. 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 Okay. Yeah, no, because the first time I saw him at, at, uh, at Ashburton, because all the appies come up to Ashburton mm. for, the, for the starters. And I said, and I, I think I spoke to Duncan. I said, Jesus, that looks like he can ride. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not our first year. <laughs> now, Tristan, is he younger or older than you? He's younger. He's a younger brother. He's How old are you? I'm 26. 26, and he is? He is 20. 20, okay, yep. so this is six year. Okay, fantastic. Your, your parents, whom I've had the privilege of meeting, uh, very much involved in your career and very much involved in your life. And Tell us a bit about mom and dad and, and the chances of them ever being owners one day. I mean, I know we never say never, but could there ever be a chance? I doubt it. <laughs> they're just not sort of racing people. No, it's, it's not that they're not racing people. You know, it's my dad has his own business and my mum, you know, she does her own thing. So look, it's, I don't think, like my dad never ever liked racing. Okay. Never ever liked racing and I'm the one that actually brought them into racing. So okay. yeah, it's, I don't think they'll be only horses anytime soon. Maybe one day, but uh, I highly doubt it. You know that uh, you talk like that, it's amazing. I mean, in our family, my, my mom, um, she quite likes going to the races but she's not a racing person uh my dad my late father was well that's how i learned it he was an owner you know punter etc my brother the same my sister i've been begging her for forever i said please you know let's go to the race. she has absolutely no interest us you know it's the week of the of the, of the hollywood bets durban july you know i'll, I'll say it's so and so is running she just said, don't even tell me well, what it is well i was cruising around the, the kruger national park this, this last couple of weeks i always wanted to go name horses off the, the rivers there because they okay you see because they really they're quite tongue twisters i thought i'd probably get the pieces <laughs> going there you know what he sent to and all those sort of places and i said to the wife come on let's breed a horse she said if you go near a race horse i'll kill you <laughs> <laughs> You get those people, eh? It's amazing. It's quite amazing. Absolutely, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, it's it's, and I suppose you know that's the. Uh, I, I, I was off, been asked once or twice to go to a cricket game. Now, you know, I would, I don't care who's playing. I would rather watch paint dry. I mean, I'm not a cricket <laughs> person, so I understand where they're coming from. You know, where they, you're not a racing person. Yeah, but, but racing is a passionate sport. Eh? You've got to be dedicated to it. I mean. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to ask to wonder to ask her, Anya in the kitchen if she could just bring me a, a winning form for Sunday because he's talking about pronunciations of names. I want to see if you can pronounce this horse's name. Not in Wadi Sonto. Sorry? In Wadi Sonto. No, no, wait till you see this Bloody name. Nice river, lots of leopards on. And uh, Serena, your parents are, okay, so they they at home on their own then because or is your brother with them? No, I've actually got, uh, I've got, Two brothers, okay. older brothers, so my older brother actually lives with my parents for okay. the time being, so yeah, they're not alone. Okay, okay, so there's mm -hmm. three, three, they've got uh, three boys? Yes, three, three boys. boys. Okay, yeah. three boys. Okay, and uh, thank you, three boys, uh, and, and so your mom, she would have had four boys in her life then, because she's got <laughs> a husband and three boys. Uh, it's like me, the opposite, I've got only girls, three girls. You've at least got a mixture. Yeah, well, good stallion. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's just find this horse's name quickly. And then I'm going to ask you to pronounce it for me. Oh, you might get it. You might get it. Number six. Put your glasses on. You're going to need your glasses on. I'm sure you'll get it. You'll get it. No, I can't get that one. Okay, listen. Okay, do you want to see, have a look? Number six. No, jeez. No. Okay. No. Yeah, when I tell you what it is, because only the call no, no, gets to explain it to me. But Sipo is riding it, so it's fine. Huh? This is how no, you pronounce it. Sipo. Race two, number six. Are you listening? I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> I wrote. I wrote. Taking a bit of time. Pass me that. Pass me that. No. Pass me that. Need no, glasses. No, no, no. There's a computer form in there. I've got it. I know exactly. But I need, I've written. I've broken it up. <laughs> <laughs> I've broken it up. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And you'll know when you uh, you might not know. Here it is. You see you're on the front. Isn't that you? Yes. Here we go. Look at that. That must be an omen. Serena Mudley being interviewed. Front page of the of the computer. Form. The horse's name is. Is you is, or is you ain't. Okay, we're thinking Jeez. of the Zulu name now. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. But but, yeah, but uh, jokes aside, Carl Hewitt said told me that there's a song called that, an old song from the nineteen sixties. Is you is you is or is you ain't? 
That's the name of the horse. Race two, number six. <laughs> is you is or is you ain't? I ain't. No. How's that for a tongue twister? Oh. Have you heard? I haven't heard of that song. No, no. Anyway, Carl Hudson told me the whole story. Out, yeah. Is you is or is you ain't? I had to break it up. It took me about half an hour. Don't worry. <laughs> Did you have a chance? It's a first time, so I'm not too sure. Right. Where were you born? I was born in Chowbe, Johannesburg. Okay. So he's a GP. You know what GP stands for? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Which school did you General go to? General practitioner. I went to... Uh, to but obviously before the academy. Yeah, yeah Tope yeah. is high in, in um, Maysdale. Okay. okay. What, in your opinion, and, and, I, and so many people have got difference of opinions about stable jockeys. Some, some, some teams believe they can get by without having a stable jockey. Some team, and some teams do get by without having a stable yeah. jockey very successfully. Some teams love having a stable jockey. They feel it's very important. First of all, what's your view and, and who have you been stable jockey to and who are you stable jockey to at the moment? Look, at the moment, I'm stable jockey to Mike Miller. And uh, look, I've been fortunate when, when I came out of my time at the academy, I walked uh, straight into Mr. Frank Robinson's job, you know, and he phoned me and asked me if I could ride for him. And, you know, at that time, I was excited. I just came out of my time and... Uh, so I was uh, stable talk to Frank Robinson and then I moved on to Lausanne Forbes after that. Okay. Um, important in your opinion, I mean, are you, are, are, do you prefer having a stable job or do you prefer freelancing? And, and how, what's your view on it, Serena? Look, it, it's a give and take situation. Yes. I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it can work for you or against you, but I, I personally like to be in a, in a yard because uh, you get to know the horses, you get to work as a team, you know, like Mr. Miller, we work fantastically well, you know, they've got a professional outfit there, and uh, look, I think it helps in the long run with the horses, because, you know, you sit in the same horses, and I mean, sometimes, if you get the same jockey riding the horses all the time, the feedback's constant, you know, yeah. you get the same thing, and I ride them the same, or accordingly, next time out, you know, so I think it does have its pluses, and uh, look, I think some people would lo love to feel out, but at the moment, I think as a growing rider, a stable job is, is what you're looking for. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. Do you like getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning? You know, when I started working for Mr. Miller... <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of a shock. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but you know, I actually enjoy it, I must be honest. It's, it's quite... Some of us can get busy. I mean, working for Mr. Miller, it's just you and the horse and your work. It's, it's not many horses around and... Uh, I actually quite enjoy it, you know, it's very peaceful in the mornings and I see why Mr. Millet wakes up that time and uh, you have your own time, you have your own tracks, you know, the tracks are fresh in the morning and uh, I, I must be honest, I've gotten used to it and, and I'm enjoying it at the moment. Serena, how do you, you know, you know unfortunately <coughs> in our industry <coughs> and in any industry really and in life, uh, criticism is not a good thing. Well, it, constructive criticism is, but we all get criticised, you know. And I, I, I've been, you've been criticised, I've been criticised. Oh, I've yeah. criticised people, and, and I've fallen, fallen foul of that because I suppose we're all humans, and, and yes, we talk from our pockets and, and, and we get emotional. But for me, criticism, if it's constructive, I love it. If it's horrible, I, I take it badly, which I shouldn't. But the question to you is, how do you take criticism? Obviously, constructive, I should imagine you take it well, but how do you take negative criticism? Yeah, look, constructive criticism is always good, you know. I mean, I've worked for hard people and I still do. I mean, Mr. Miller's not easy at times, and uh, I worked for Mr. Pula and Mr. Ferraris, like I mentioned. And uh, look, I, th I take it pretty well, but you know, I always find, and it took me a long while to realize that because I can be hard on myself, and I'm still hard on myself, you know. I, I can get home and watch a replay five times over because of what someone said to me, but. Uh, I've learned to adjust now and it's nothing can change after a race. Yeah. So whether you, you criticize me, I can't change it. So that's what I deal with now. You know, it's, you can't change anything. What happens, happens. And if that's your opinion of me, then well, fine. It's not going to change the way I think or the way I ride. So look, it's just, it's a learning curve. Racing's a big learning curve, I feel. And uh, look, you always have riders like Anton Marcus, Warren Kennedy, Keegan DeMello, where you can go and ask them, for advice, you know, and that's what I do often with, with Anton, you know, and uh, I must be honest, there was a time in my career where I was riding for a certain yard and things went a bit pear-shaped for me and I lost interest in racing. I mean, I did not I did not want to wake up for work, didn't want to come to work, I just didn't want to do it anymore, and, you know, as much as people encouraged me, the only person that got me going again was Anton, you know, Anton used to speak to me on the phone in the same week, like three times a week for 20-30 minutes on the phone, encouraging me and you know, Anton, 
doesn't really give a lot away, but he's very helpful at times. Yes. Okay. Well, certainly, would be, is the right man to take advice from, Andrew. Definitely. I mean, he's been around. He's written the best. He's written with the best. He's written against the best. So. Exactly. You know, and that's what I find. Like sometimes, I see the younger kids today. You know, they, they don't ask for advice, and I mean. If you have someone of that caliber that you're riding against, yeah. you can always go to him. I mean, Anton, if, you, if I go to me, he's happy to share a word with me. And I mean, I think that's it's a big asset to have in the jockey room. Along the way, in racing or at work or, or wherever, couple, one or two of your favorite horses or your best horses that you've obviously you've ridden a group one. I mean, it would be remiss not to talk about that. So mm. tell us about all that. Yeah, look, it's... Uh, I got a few horses that I like, like Mr. Miller's two year olds, but Mr. Miller tells me never to fall in love because they should they'll end up in Mauritius. <laughs> <laughs> that's their that's their that's their business yeah, model. Well, that's their business model, yeah. Yeah, that's their Good business model and yeah. that's how it works, absolutely for them. Yes, you know, so I've learned not to fall in love. Uh, but you know it's you get attached to certain horses, you know. I, I had a filly that I used to ride for for Andre Nell called Vogue Idea. She was the sweetest thing and I still actually think about this filly sometimes today, you know, but uh, Look, it's just fantastic. I think Pearl of Asia is the closest to my heart. Yes, your first group one. For now, you know, and yeah, it was my first group one. It was hard work, and uh, look, I'm just glad and we all came together. You know, God is, God is good at times. Yeah, he certainly is, that's for it sure. It was a good day to win, too. Yes. You know, Hong Kong. You know, you know it was funny because uh, I was hard on myself the whole season, and the same day, I was running third in group ones and second in group twos, and on the same day I ran second on Honakalani. And I thought to myself, Jesus, this is, this is not coming, you know? And so I was really frustrated when I got back to the jockey room and I said to myself, you know what, just pull yourself together, you've got one more group, group one ride left. And just take a chill pill, <laughs> go out there and try your best. And funny enough, it, my last group one for the season, was actually the winner, so it was just fantastic. You know, sometimes you must never lose hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I think it's also for some reason. I mean, horses, horses actually understand that if you if you uptight and and you still want things to happen, they don't happen. But if you sit down and you relax, the horse relaxes and they give it to you. You know, that's so true, Mr. Harrison. You know, I, I find that the biggest asset of my riding is. Never to panic. Whether you're riding, riding an 8 to 10 or 100 to 1, it's the same thing. Yes. You just got to stick to basics. You know, the horses don't know their prices. They don't know what odds they are. Sure. They don't know what jockey is riding them. So, you know, you just got to stick to the basics. And uh, I believe that's a big asset to have. You can just be calm going into a race. I think that's one of the uh, big assets for any jockey is, is, to, is to be relaxed. Okay. You've also got to think tactically. Yes. Yes. No, uh, and what you've got under you and, and how you're going to get the best out of the horse. But to be relaxed and to... to you find blokes like like Andrew Fortune, Garth Puller, those those are the top jocks. I mean, yeah. they, uh, Robbie Sham. I remember Robbie Sham. He used to ride like a bloody monkey up a stick. <laughs> I mean, he had a terrible seat on a horse, but the horse just galloped for him, for him yeah. because he was just relaxed. I mean, yeah, uh, that's definitely a, is is the temperament as as we've said on various shows, and everyone's temperament's different. And and if there's a jockey that's got a bit of an edgy temperament, we're not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that if you look at the likes of Gavin Arena, Keegan, yourself, those guys, they've got that chilled go yeah. with the flow, and I think that does help. You know, as it does who, help. whoever we interviewed some time ago said, well, it certainly does help, but sometimes they can get a bit too chilled, yeah. you know. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that <laughs> yes, is that you, you guys are the kind of people you'd want on a on a crime scene or in a in a, in a, in a, in a, in a Critical situation because situation, you keep everything yeah. calm. Call me. So that that certainly, and as you say, the horse can pick that up. You know, talking about calm, you are a quiet, reserved person. Would you say you're a little shy? Yeah, you know, I'm not that type of person to have a big, loud mouth. In, you know, <laughs> Who's, uh, we all know who the loud, my loudest one is in the jockey room. <laughs> Initials SV. <laughs> <laughs> Our good friend. He wrote my first winner, Mr. Sean Veal. Yeah, Sean and I are very good friends. And look, yeah, some folks are like, I just like to be very professional and concentrate before a race and be to myself, you know. I often study the card quite a bit before a race, you know. And uh, look, it's just, you get different types of oaks, and uh, I'm just one of those who just like to be chill, relaxed, and uh, don't say much. <laughs> Remember when we interviewed Sean, he says, yeah, he can be heard anywhere. <laughs> the most no, wonderful, no, wonderful. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Sean Veal. As long as you're not irritating, it's fine. Absolutely. Uh, every person is different. Some are quiet, some are loud. Your sponsors, you've uh, 
Hollywood bets, we know what Hollywood bets have done for racing and for, for a lot of stables and jockeys and trainers, etc. And, and, and they just raise the bar and raise the bar. And winning form is part of Hollywood. Uh, and, and they've also sponsored jockeys for a long time. You've been with them for a long time, many, many years now. Yes, you know, I must uh, thank a gentleman called uh, Warren Land Fun. I'm not sure if you know him. <laughs> he made it come about and uh, that's how I got into winning form. And uh, look, it's been fantastic for the time I've been in winning form. I've ran my group one with them. You know, they're just great people t- to work for. And uh, look, I think it nothing goes without saying what they're doing for racing. You know, it's just fantastic. And uh, it's just brought the vibe back into racing, what Hollywood and winning form are doing. So it's I'm just privilege to be sponsored by them. Okay. Off the top of your head, can you, because I can't, but roughly years, it's been at least five, six, maybe, I'm just guessing, it's been a long time. Maybe. It has been a couple of years now, yeah. I'm not too sure exact days, yeah. but it has been a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's okay to be nice in this world, Andrew, I promise you. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Anyway, so a good couple of years is winning form, yeah. and they can, there's a whole lot of guys countrywide that they sponsor. Well, there's winning form just arrived. They've just arrived to do their podcast, which we must add, on www.galloptv.co.za you log on there free to register etc and you get Shaheen Shaw's podcast you get the winning form podcast with Anthony Delpesh and James Rich so you get everything um, you get absolutely everything so it is uh, I suppose you've been away in the bush you haven't seen uh, that lovely website are you registered on Gallup yes, yeah. yeah. okay so you will watch us later on yeah. <laughs> are we on Gallup we, of course we're on Gallup. What are you yeah, talking yeah. about? Of course we are. You better behave myself. Today. You better <laughs> behave yourself. Uh, so, you know, in racing or in life, people have... Uh, uh, talking of winning form and their tipsters, there's James Rich, Jimmy the Rich. Can you come and say hello to us, please? Uh, he says he's busy. Maybe because his tips have been a little shy. That's why he wants to stay away from the camera. Uh, he's shouting, did we see yesterday? Um, that's why he's got a smile on his face. Your role models in racing, you, you know... As Tawanda asked, it doesn't have to be somebody in racing, but who did you look up to? Yes, Andrew said it beautifully. You know, you look up to yourself. You know, you, you want to be, well, yeah. there's only one Serena Mudley, yeah. but who do you admire in horse racing? Or who's your role model? Or who look, was your role model? Look, uh, I always looked up to Anton. You know, his work ethic is phenomenal. I mean, he'll go and work always anywhere. And I always looked up to him growing up, as well as Keegan. You know, I like Keegan's style, and I think he's... He's developed really into a top class rider, you know, and uh, look, growing up when I was in academy, I used to love following Keegan and, and Anton, so those were my two role models uh, going through the academy. Okay. What about, what about now? Who's would you look up to now? I still, I still look up to Anton. <laughs> Anton's very sharp and the way he rides races, you know, it's very tactical and uh, so I'm always watching him in the race and even when he's, when I'm not riding, when he's riding in Cape Town, I, I always see him high rides also and I'll sometimes take the race card and think how will I ride those and watch the way he rides those you know so it just keeps me on top of my game all the time what do you think makes him such a, an incredible jockey Anton's got brilliant hands eh? I must be honest he's got brilliant hands and he thinks really quick so he's very tactical and he can think in a split second he can make a decision it's nine times out of ten the right decision to make you know so you got to watch your riders, like, you know, your, your tactical riders, because at the end of the day, it's not just about riding a race who's in a race. You know, you got to be sharp. you got to know what's going on in the race and make the right decisions, you know, according to pace and speed and when to move at the right time. So it's a lot of factors that come into account, and uh, I watch riders that, that use a lot of thinking in a race, and uh, that's where, where I think it's an asset to watch those riders. I think uh, the, the best riders are, 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 are quick to react. Um, they can see a situation, they look up and they can see a situation that's happening. Do I go left? Yeah. Do I go right? And sometimes actually before back. it happens. Yes, before it happens. Yeah. You've got to see it before it happens. Exactly. Do you fi- thank you. Do you find it, uh, what's, it might may be a stupid question, but when you're in a race, say you're six, seven, eight lengths off, I mean, and you want to see what's happening around you, and you sort of, you, obviously you look up, but I mean, is it difficult to see what's going on ahead of you? I mean, obviously you're keeping your head down, you're constantly, I mean, is it easy to take a glance up? Are you able to... to, to Surely you should be looking up all the time. 
Yeah, well, yes, but I'm, what I'm saying, <laughs> you, I know that. How is it going to come down? Like driving, <laughs> it's like driving with blinkers on. Man. <laughs> when I say look up, I mean, they're not always looking at the horse's neck. You, of course, looking yeah. up, you're looking forward. But, you know, you, you, is it easy to sort of clock what's happening all around you? Or is it like driving a car, you've got a blind spot, and that's the point I'm driving? No, it's, you, you can definitely look around and see where your market rivals are and how well they're going. You know, So I often take a glance around in the race to see how far, far off the market drivers are and you know that, that the horses that obviously are my dangers so yeah you can have a glance I've, I've w- you know w- walked around the course when a race is on I've been at the start and in various positions generally is a bit of talk or talking shouting in the race most times not because they're quite silent it's, it's lovely to hear the hooves going and all this but there are times where the guys all shout and swear and scream at each other. That's obviously just because, you know, you say, I'm coming across or move out of my way. or. But yeah. generally, it's quite quiet, but yeah, things you, can get heated. Yeah, it can. You know, you get those times, you know, at the end of the day, rider safety and horse safety comes first. Mm. So, look, sometimes you get inexperienced riders that are coming across too quick and you need to let them know that they're coming across too quick. Correct. You know? So, it does get a bit heated, but most times not. You know, we have respect as riders for each other. So look, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, I, I, I had friends who used to they lived at, they had a house at the back stretch in Scottsville. <laughs> she said she learned a lot of the language. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we, we touched on, on what motivates you. Have we, we, did we touch, did I ask you that question as to what sort of keeps you going, what keeps fueling the fire? No, look, I, I try and just keep uh, a clear mind at all times, you know, watch as much racing as possible and uh, look, the horses keep me motivated, you know, you find your horses in the morning, your good ones, your average ones, you know, and uh, that keeps me motivated to come to work every day, you know, I want to sit on the horse every day, no one's going to sit, no groom, no other jockey's going to get a feeler, so that's what keeps me motivated and, okay. you know, hungry for the game. Very disciplined, you're a disciplined human being, Serena, and... and what do you do in your spare time? It must be a hell of a lot if you start work at 3 o'clock in the morning. No. finish at 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I actually finish at 10. Um, I mean, I ride three strings for Mr. Miller, Mr. Pula, Rafa Lorenzo now. You know, so I try and get around as much as possible. So I finish like at quarter past 10 and then I go home and I head off straight to the gym. So I spend like an hour and a half in the gym and I come back, have a shower, have breakfast and then go pick up my little one from school. And then let, give the man some time off. Let him relax in the afternoon. You're a hard task for seven hours in the morning. You and I have still in dreamland cuddled up to our wives and they're, they're working. There's no so, rest with, with a little two hours. No, I was going to say, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I can imagine. But did the man at least puts his feet up in the afternoon, for goodness sake? Well, you must go to the Kruger National Park and you get <coughs> up at 34 o'clock in the morning and you're still driving at 6 o'clock. Because <laughs> the missus doesn't want to go to bed. Uh, well, that's, you know, there must be a reason why she doesn't want to go to bed. You need to raise your game. <laughs> Serena, um, your goals, your goals for, what are you laughing at? <laughs> you must raise your game. Um, there's tablets for that, you know. I don't need them. <laughs> Serena, your goals, your goals. Um, I mean, you've achieved group one uh, success, but I mean, knowing you, you want more group ones, but in general, your goals? Look, um, I always set myself um, goals and sometimes... <laughs> I can be hard on myself to achieve them, but you look, one thing I haven't done is, is traveled uh, overseas, so okay. I think that's probably my next goal, to try and have a stint overseas, you know. I've, I've ridden a lot in South Africa, and I think it's time to actually go and try somewhere overseas, you know. You get your brother to open the door there, man. I don't know about England, Mr. Harrison. I don't really like England. Maybe later on, but uh, I like Singapore, Hong Kong type of racing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that uh, I, I was. I, I love watching. Uh, we love watching this Hong Kong, Singapore. It's fantastic. Talking about, um, you know, riding and watching racing. I was chatting to somebody the other day. He was actually a, a huge rugby fan. Knows nothing about racing, and he said he watches all the rugby games, all the good tries, and he gets excited. And often people say, well, you know, about racing. For me, when you watch a good ride or a good horse or a good anything, you know, it's like you don't have to have money on it. I mean, I, 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 you, you get a thrill out of watching South Africa scoring a try because it was a damn good try. Then you might get a thrill of watching a jockey ride a damn good race. Mm. You might not have had a cent on it. It's a sport that, or a no, horse that looks good or a champion horse. There's you know, you look at things in, in, in like rugby, if you don't know anything about rugby, 
You see the bloke throwing the ball around. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's quite nice. But then you see a bloke, I remember, I remember uh, Anton getting beaten in the, the derby in Cape Town. Yeah, yeah. He rode a bloody brilliant race. Yeah. Brilliant race. And then Jackson came past and nailed him on the line. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, people, can they see that? Right. That's yeah. what I find in racing at the moment. You know, there's not many people who can actually see that. You know, there's, I mean, like the older Oaks, yes, but recently I find it's, like, I get excited, like when Cosmic Highway won yes. that, that sprint yep. race. Jeez, I was, my missus asked me, are you going crazy? I said, that gave me goosebumps, the way yeah. it was, it got like he was dropped in at the 300. Absolutely. The way he won, but people don't understand it, and you don't actually see that anymore, you know, it's just, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, 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 a hard, it's a hard game to try and explain to young people. Young people now uh, do not know the attention span of that much. That's, that's why true. I also say that the, the, the group of people that we've got in racing, we need to love and nurture because, you know, there's, it's a special kind of special, if yeah. I'm happy to say that. <laughs> is a, you know, that's it, true. It certainly <laughs> is. Uh, anyway, let's go back and uh, talk about the stick rule. Now, the Stipes are, have brought in a, a stick rule and... What are your thoughts on it? Why, because, yes, and, and again, we're not talking negative. Uh, a lot of the jockeys have suffered uh, uh, for this, uh, the stick rule. What are your thoughts? And how, how easy is it to, to keep count when you're fighting out of finish and when you're really doing your best to win the race? Very difficult, Mr. Infone. I know it's, uh, I've fallen victim to that on numerous occasions, you know, and uh, I find it hard. You know, it changed quite dramatically over the last couple of years. And when you when you riding and you a lot 15 and then you suddenly change to 12 it's I mean it's a lot I'm in, the, in the last hundred and you going flat out to that finish line and you, you know the last thing you're gonna worry about is actually and I mean the crops today are not absolutely are not harmless to horses I'm very sorry you know and yeah. uh, jockeys don't actually do this hard. I mean if you know it's, it's just it's very difficult for riders in that moment to actually yeah. be thinking about counting your stick use and uh, look obviously we're going to have to adjust as sure. the times are changing you know it's sure. getting tighter and tighter but uh, look i think it's uh it's it's, it's a learning curve for everyone and uh, I, i'm one definitely learning about that <laughs> yeah. you know, i was talking to one of the staff so should we name name nameless he said this is what we've been re reduced to he said we have to sit there and count strikes <laughs> well, right? for each jockey uh, that might uh, but I think they got the, the top five jockeys that they look out for. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they've, yeah. they've, they've, pulled, they've been top reduced. Top five strikers. Yeah. Top five strikers. <laughs> but, you know, as you, uh, it's just merely an opinion. You know, yes, they, if the rules are rules, and we respect the rules. But, you know, but maybe... Imagine, imagine maybe, putting 12 strikes in, in Hong Kong. Jeez. The blokes would bloody lynch you. Yeah. You say that's too much or too little? Too or little. Too little, yeah. They, so they have a right them the you. Yeah, yeah, they, But what I'm saying is they should maybe just, you know, instead of saying 12, maybe make, maybe make it 15 to 20, or just because, as you say, yeah, it's hard, you know. You know, you, 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 Serena says, I mean, the, the crops today are pretty... They're they not are getting with a piece of spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. and also... Uh, you know, it's more of a noise than anything else. You know, yeah. it makes the noise, that dah, dah noise. That's what it's, you know, it gets the horse spurred on. It's not the hurt. It's no, not right. It's, it's not exactly. the hurt. Well, if anybody wants to watch a, 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 a use of a, a stick, you don't watch Lester Pickett win the, the derby on Rivera, uh, Roberto. Yes. I mean, the sticks in those days were black. Like and they did yeah. I mean, you could come down, the, go around the horse's backside and come around the other side. I mean, <laughs> that, okay, that, that was cool. But it sticks to that. Today, yeah, no. And also, they're more, you know, you, you often see them guys coming into the straight and you, you know, you slap them down the neck, down the shoulder. Because yeah, you want to spur track, them up, yeah. you want to get them going. You, yeah. you know, they, they need it. A horse hangs, you change your stick. For me, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's for me, it's needed. It's a riding and aid. And you know, another, riding thing, is, aid, yeah. another thing is, um, you know, when you're trying your best, I mean, I go into a race and think to myself, the owners paid money for this horse. The trainers put a lot of money into the horse. You know, it, I need to produce and to the best of my ability to yeah. get the rules to improve and uh, at least earn a check. I mean, I get on every horse I ride and try and run in the first five oh, because, okay. I mean, there's a lot of money involved and the owner would love to see the horse earn a check, you Absolutely. know. And so sometimes when you're trying your hardest, you can accidentally slip and go one over or two over, yeah. which yeah. is hard, but uh, like I said, the times are changing and we have to adjust as riders. Don't let your, don't let your wife uh, find out about the uh, stick rule with you because she'll be chasing you around the house with a stick. <laughs> My wife doesn't count, but she just slaps. <laughs> <laughs> she, just, she just gives you connections. Okay. Nicknames. Do you have any nicknames? Yes. Moods. 
Moods. Yes, and that actually came about in Zimbabwe. Okay. Yeah, with Diego. I don't know how Diego came about that. We were actually good friends in Zimbabwe, and uh, Diego was a big help. You know, it's never easy going to a country you never know, and uh, we were there for each other. It was some tough times. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into detail, but uh, we used to catch a lot of taxis up and down. But uh, look, we were there for each other, and Diego's my good friend now. So that's how the name came about. It's not absolutely yeah. wonderful. It's good racing. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Good fun, though. And, and uh, when I interviewed Alison Wright last week, she said a lot of the jockeys said that, that race course was the best, one of the, the surface, one of the oh, best yeah. in the world. See, I promise you, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I would go back there any day, that's any day of the week to ride there. Uh, talking about Diego de Gavea, <laughs> Uh, also a wonderful rider and a wonderful human being, but also loud, full of joys. Always <laughs> got a joke. If he, a good golfer, I believe. Yeah. Uh, if he wasn't a jockey, he could become a comedian. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's Diego. That's He's, Diego. I mean, yeah. And it's good to have someone like that, you know, by your side. Absolutely, absolutely. It'll keep spirits up when everybody's down. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the world would be a boring place if everyone was the same. Then, but because so moods. So he called you moods. Was it moods because you were always? Sometimes you could be in a bad mood, or moods because of moodly. <laughs> yes, I was. I could. I can't get my moods. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it had nothing to do with the surname. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to move on to a bit of a what I call personal, but it's not personal. It's just uh, learning a bit more about you. You wake up in the morning. What's the first thing you reach for? Coffee. <laughs> Coffee, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Your age, you told us you were 37. Yeah, <laughs> ten, 37 going on 40. <laughs> <laughs> um, your weight, do you have a problem with your weight? Recently, yes. I mean, okay. I must be honest, I battle to do 52 now. My bottom weight's like 53 and a half. Okay. I have a sweat for 53, so yes, recently, I never used to, but recently... Uh, but I mean, that, that's still a, a nice weight to be able to ride Yes, it's no? not, it's, it's pretty light, but uh, I would like to ride 52, especially in the season, you know, you get those nice light rides and crew yeah. presses, so I would... Yeah. Yeah. Your family we've touched on, but now I want to talk about your uh, close, close family. You have a, a girlfriend? Yes. Tell us about her. Yeah, I've got a girlfriend, uh, Tanil Hart. We've been together, like, I think it's going five years now. Okay. So we've been together. We've got two lovely kids. I was up, so I'm going to interrupt you for a moment there. I, I, I mean, Serena is such a quiet man who m goes about his business and minds his own business. I was interviewing him the other day, and he came up carrying this the <laughs> child, and I, I was just quite surprised. I didn't know if it was whose child it was. Then I hunted him down after the interview. I said, is that your little one? He said, yes. I didn't even know you had two children. Two lovely children. Yes. Um, Emma and Ethan. So, yeah, we've got two lovely kids. How old are they? Uh, uh, Ethan's just turned two and Emma's going to be one soon. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, lovely. So, there we go. Two kids. And uh, you've done my time. You've done your time. <laughs> okay, so no more kids from you. Hard right? work, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that's what you're saying. The afternoon, once you fetch from school, etc., you're on your toes. and Yo, I tell you, I'm saying, fun, it never stops. Oh, Jeez, right. Kids got energy for days. <laughs> <laughs> no, wonderful. Okay. Uh, what car do you drive? Uh, Toyota Tez. <laughs> Toyota Tez? <laughs> Joking. <laughs> I drive a BMW and uh, my i20. Is it the i20 you were in this morning? Yes. Oh, okay, so the, Toyota, uh, so the, the BMW and the i20, the i20 is a good car. It was like a friend of mine said to me also, he says, I, 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 I said to him, what car do you drive? He said, no, I've got a TT. I said, oh, that's fantastic. There's Audi TTs are lovely. He said, no, Toyota Taz. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with, the, wrong with those cars, eh? Nothing wrong with those <laughs> cars either. Absolutely. The, 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 the thing of the baby. <laughs> 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 if I were to take you, if I said to you, I'm taking you and Tanil and we're going to have a meal, what's your favorite? What do you want to eat? Uh, ribs and chips. Ribs and chips, okay. That's why he waits 53. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have a sweet tooth? Yes, most you definitely. Do. Definitely, okay. 54. 50. <laughs> uh, we'll be going up. Uh, pineapples, do they belong on pizza or no not? No ways. No. Uh, now we have to debate this. Why not? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I cannot stand pineapples on pizza. No chance. Oh but a pineapple in a fruit salad you'll eat. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Right? You, you Grumps, what do you say? Pineapple on the pizza? I don't eat pizza. You don't like pizza? No. Okay. I had the other day bacon. Banana and pineapple. Cheese. <laughs> and it was the most delicious pizza with extra mozzarella. <laughs> so you definitely had no pineapple. No, no. No, no. pineapple, okay. Um, what's your pet hate? Something that really, in, uh, in racing or out of racing, what irritates you? Maybe on the roads, at home, what's your pet hate? 
Uh, grandstand jockeys. Okay. <laughs> I hate that. Jesus. Uh, okay. It frustrates me. Okay, we, I think we've all you out. Uh, <laughs> and you, we've all fallen foul. We've all fallen foul to that to that one. But uh, okay, and uh, what cheers you up the most? What 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 do you love the most? What? You know, I must be honest. Ever since having my kids, they cheer me up the most, and uh, there's nothing better in life. You know, I wake up in the morning and uh, to see those smile on those kids' faces. I mean, when I come back from races, I can have a bad day, and uh, you get them standing at the window, jumping and cheering for you to come back home. So look, it's just nothing fantastic. My kids really cheer me up. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Now that's lovely. Andrew, I think uh, we pretty much, uh, we can talk and talk and talk, but I mean, uh, if there's anything we want to add, or, or it's just been lovely to find out about Serena and touch I've base with him. I've added my five cents. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Serena, you, you know, it's, it's lovely to watch you race and, and just lovely to, to have you winning and, and just humble and, and doing your best. And yeah, it's, it's, thank you for and coming the to the show. On the horizon. Yeah, uh, the season's on the horizon. Any, the any, any good horses you've got coming up? Look, um, we've got some nice tools for Mr. Miller and uh, look, we've got some plans for them and obviously they have to produce. Two olds are very unpredictable, so... Something for the gold medallion and, uh, and Alan Robinson? Yes, I think we definitely will have. Uh, okay. And uh, look, I think I would love to get back on Pearl of Asia's back. Since I've won the group one, I've never sat in him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd hope well, you'll have to speak to Robbie Hill. Just give him a packet of cigarettes and be fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, the season, yeah, we've got uh, two two year olds with the Millers who unfortunately have been injured due to racing, and that's what happens, you know. So I don't think they'll yeah, be. Yeah, you know, I find two year olds are very soft, and you've got to be careful yeah, with them sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Horses get injured yeah. anywhere in the world, unfortunately. It's part of being an athlete. But uh, they'll be back. That's a wrap. Just to, before we close up and uh, let you know that Alistair Gordon was here with us. And uh, he's delivered the Bloodstock South African National Yearling Sale Catalogue for 2022 on the 28th and 29th of April. It's at the TBA Complex, Johannesburg. And that doesn't stand for to be announced. So if somebody says to you, where's the sales happening? It's not to be announced. It's at the TBA yeah. Complex. There's the catalogue. <laughs> There's the catalogue for you. And uh, I noticed Ali just dropped off the catalog and bolted and bolted you didn't even have breakfast with us so the sale will be up soon that's a wrap from all of us and be safe be happy and serena thank you so much for your time we wish you all the best and uh yeah all the best to you thank you so much it's uh it was an absolute pleasure being on your show thank you we'll see you as always in the number one box from andrew warren and serena goodbye